Rather than expressing anger over the past history, we Japanese would like to have a dialogue with the US and another country in direction of never using atomic bombing again. Konnichiwa! This is Tak Channel. Today I'm going to react to a video of simulation of a nuclear blast in a major city. I previously reacted as a Japanese to a video about the deaths in World War II. This time I would like to react to a video on the same channel that simulate how many people would die if an atomic bomb were dropped. In 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. Many people say that this was a good thing because it ended Japan's barbaric war quickly. Also, even today, it is believed that having nuclear weapons will protect the country. Therefore, the possession of atomic bomb is not necessarily denied in today's world. Therefore, Japan as the only country in the world to have experienced atomic bombings has a responsibility to call for the prevention of the possession of atomic bombs. We must make sure that we do not cause another tragedy. Today, I will explain from Japanese perspective in this video. So let's get started. It has been two and a half years since I posted the trailer for my upcoming climate film, as many of you have noticed, um, and I have been working on it almost every day ever since. Uh, so it's really close, and thank you for your patience, and stay tuned. In the meantime, I do have something to share with you today. Um, I generally reserve uh, this channel for my own independent projects, but recently I've been working with the folks behind the Nobel Peace Prize, and not only have they been wonderful to work with in terms of support and creative freedom, but they have allowed me to post the video here on my channel. Uh, so thank you to them, and here's the film. Imagine for a moment the unimaginable happened. A major city is hit by a nuclear weapon. Now, no number could account for all the devastation that would result but we can put a number on the deaths. At least we can make an educated guess based on our understanding of what nuclear blasts do to city structures and people. We'll assume the bomb is detonated in the air to maximize the radius of impact, as was done in Japan in 1945. Mm. But here we'll use an 800 kiloton warhead, a relatively large bomb in today's arsenals and a hundred times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. In the history of mankind, nuclear weapons have been used in practice only twice, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So was there any difference between the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs? In general, it is said that the Nagasaki bomb was used with more destructive power. However, the number of victims in Hiroshima was greater than that in Nagasaki. In fact, it is said that 140,000 people died in Hiroshima, while 74,000 people died in Nagasaki. The reason for this is that Nagasaki was surrounded by mountains compared to Hiroshima, so the mountains blocked the damage from the explosion. Upon detonation, a fireball as hot as the sun would expand to a radius of 800 meters. Those near the blast would be vaporized. And within a two kilometer radius, all buildings would likely be hmm. destroyed. And we'll assume that virtually no one survives inside this area. Which, based on population density, would start the death tally at 120,000 people. As you move further away from ground zero, the damage caused by the atomic bomb. It is believed that between 50,000 people and 100,000 people were killed in the Hiroshima bombing within the day of the drop. An area of 10 square kilometers from the hypercenter was destroyed. The explosion was also felt more than 60 kilometers away. About 60,000 buildings or two-thirds of the buildings in the city were destroyed. In addition, 92% of those who were within 600 meters of the hypocenter were killed. 
The victims who survived suffered cyber damage from the intense heat rays and radiation. Exposure to radioactive materials cause symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, bleeding, and hair loss. In addition, in the five years following the attack, the number of leukemia caused among the residents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki increased dramatically. In the ten years following the bombings, the incident of thyroid, breast, and lung cancers among the victims was also higher than normal. In addition, the experience was so horrific that they lost loved one and suffered physiological trauma, fearing that they too would become ill from radiation. Also, many people suffered discrimination due to their scared appearance, health concerns, and prejudice. What I would like to tell you is that the atomic bombing did not just kill a large number of people. But also cause physiological trauma and discrimination based on appearance. So the damage caused by the atomic bombing is much greater than you can imagine. Estimating deaths becomes more complicated. From as far away as 11 kilometers, the radiant heat from the blast would be strong enough to cause third-degree burns on exposed skin. And as you get closer to the blast. The heat becomes so intense that clothing, even skin, would ignite into flames. That said, most people in the city would be indoors or otherwise sheltered from direct exposure. But the very structures that offered this protection would then become a cause of injury, as debris would rip through buildings and rain down on city streets. As a rough estimate, we can assume that half the people between two and eleven kilometers from the blast are killed, from burns, debris, smoke, collapsed buildings, and radiation sickness, which translates roughly into an additional half million people. Many of these deaths will occur days, even weeks after the attack. Radiation sickness takes about a week to cause death. And、much of the dust and ash produced from the explosion will be dangerously radioactive, especially if it originated near ground zero. And the distance the particles travel will depend on the wind and other factors. Now, since this simulation is of an air burst attack, it will produce significantly less radioactive fallout than ground attacks targeting missile silos or bunkers. So we'll go with a relatively small number of deaths outside the 11-kilometer range. If it were a surface blast, the fallout deaths could surpass all other deaths combined. But it's a very difficult number to predict.、Mm -hmm. In theory, radiation deaths can be reduced if people can avoid exposure to the fallout, especially during the critical first few days. Fallout shelters were common during the Cold War. But people rarely build shelters today, and schools no longer practice nuclear war drills.、Mm -hmm. We generally talk less about surviving a nuclear attack.、Mm. Yes,、yeah. and in a way, it's good that we're less afraid of the bomb now that the Cold War is over. When nations are less on edge, the risk of accidents is arguably reduced. But nuclear weapons remain one of the great threats to humanity, and today we're entering a new era in nuclear weapon history. Why did the atomic bomb go to Hiroshima and Nagasaki? The city of Hiroshima was chosen as the first target of the atomic bomb. Hiroshima, which had not been affected by the war before, was a good place to observe the effects of the bomb. In addition, Hiroshima was also a military city. And、Nagasaki was not a target at first because it is a steep city with many mountains and rugged terrain, and the nearby Allied POW camp. The U.S. military was mainly considering Kobra City in Fukuoka Prefecture. This was a relatively flat area with industrial and urban areas. However, according to the pilot's reports, Kobra was snowed in smoky fog on the day of the attack. 
The crew have been ordered to visually select a target that would maximize the blast radius of the bomb. Therefore, they divided from the planned route and headed for the Nagasaki. Long standing nuclear arms treaties are being reassessed, and countries, big and small, face the prospect of new arms races. Mm -hmm. In part because technology is emerging that may give one side a considerable strategic advantage, mm. notably hypersonic weapons. Current nuclear missiles travel around the Earth at high altitudes, making them visible by radar earlier in their flight. Now, some hypersonic vehicles travel close to the Earth, through the atmosphere, at at least five times the speed of sound, giving defending countries far less time to react. Mm -hmm. And remember that some of the most perilous moments during the Cold War occurred mm. when countries maneuvered to reduce their opponents' reaction time. And the less time countries have to react, the more <laughs> likely an accident will occur, or ah. rash judgment. And then you have smaller nukes that blur the line between conventional and nuclear weapons, Smack. providing a more slippery path to nuclear escalation. Now, for ordinary citizens, nuclear weapon policy may seem like a complex, even intimidating topic. But leaders often consider public perceptions when making policy. In many countries, voter opinion is an important factor. Whether you believe nuclear weapons have made the world safer or more dangerous, mm -hmm. both sides generally agree that the bomb brings an unparalleled risk and that there are things we can do to reduce the risk. Mm -hmm. Like minimizing how many countries get the bomb, or scaling back Cold War arsenals, or stabilizing technology races, or pledging to never be the first one to strike. Such ideas have often resulted in signed treaties, some of which have held for decades. Some are at risk of expiring, and some just need a final push to become activated. By being steadfast in these efforts and not walking away from diplomatic achievements, we can continue the work of ensuring that this nightmare simulation never becomes a reality. Yeah. Never. If you would like to learn about specific policies that could help reduce the risk of nuclear war, you can find links to resources in the video notes. <sighs> Lastly, in 2016, President Obama became the first sitting president to visit the atomic bombed city of Hiroshima. This has a great historical significance for us Japanese. Before Obama's visit, there was an opinion in Japan that Obama should apologize to Japan, but this opinion was very small. In primary survey, 78% of Japanese people say that they would not ask Obama to apologize for the atomic bombings. I would like to remind everyone in the world that we Japanese do not hate the United States for dropping the atomic bomb. Of course there is anger for the victims, but that does not mean that we should demand an apology from the US today. Rather than expressing anger over the past history, we Japanese would like to have a dialogue with the US and another country in direction of never using atomic bombing again. However, today we have the largest hydrogen bomb in human history developed by the Soviet Union. It is said to have more than 3000 times the destructive power of the Hiroshima bomb. I can't imagine. Therefore, we Japanese hope that the world will move towards the abolition of nuclear weapons in the future. Lastly, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and like me. Bye bye.